Next, we're going to talk about inverter. All right. So now we've got an inverter right here in the middle. And this is not an inverter charger. This is an inverter. So the biggest issues when you trouble an inverter, honestly, is remember what I said yesterday, and this was important. Inverters have no ability of saying no. They will do whatever you ask of them. The only thing that protects them is going to be this fuse right here that is rated and extremely specified by the manufacturer of your inverter. And that fuse will stop the inverter from doing too much work. In the summer or in the winter, fall or spring, people get a little bit enthusiastic of what an inverter can do. They try to run their heaters, ceramic heaters, through the inverter when they're at anchorage. Thinking, hey, you know what, I need more heat. I don't have my generator running. I'm not connected to shore power. I'm going to plug in all my heaters. Now, besides the point that you are burning through your batteries faster than they can ever experience, you're talking about a life event of epic proportions in terms of the load. The inverter is going to try to do what you want. It's going to say, hey, you know, that's what they want. The only thing that saves that inverter is this fuse. This fuse will blow, protecting the inverter, but now you don't understand why your inverter doesn't work anymore. And if you're not connected to shore power, which you probably aren't because you're using your inverter, this inverter lights up for two, needs two things, generally. It needs either shore power or it needs battery power. And if you're not connected to shore power because you're running your inverter, then this thing goes dark. And it's dead. And you don't know why. First step is change that fuse. Before you change that fuse, you turn the switch off, right, so there's no load. Change the fuse. Make sure the connection is done perfectly. Remember, stainless steel is not conductive. That fuse is going to have stainless steel washers. If you put that stainless steel washer between the fuse holder, in between the fuse holder and the fuse, you will melt that fuse holder down. It will melt literally down. And I, that fuse holder does not melt easily because stainless is not practically non-conductive, like 4%, I'm not sure, something like that. Stainless steel is not a conductive material like copper. So you're changing the fuse, make sure every the washers are in the exact same order they were in. Okay, this is very important. Change that fuse, turn the switch back on, this should light up. All right, it does not light up. Okay. Was the switch accidentally turned off? Shouldn't be, because it's out of the way, it's hidden, it's not very accessible, but someone could have been in your engine room playing with switches. Right, that's off, that's another one. <laughs> The other issue might be the remote panel. I don't have a remote panel here, but this here has a remote panel. And generally you can do everything on an inverter or you can do it on the remote panel. Forget the remote panel, go to the inverter. Try to turn it on or off at the inverter. On older inverters, the Freedom brand, you know, the one that's super popular, like probably 80% of all boats have that inverter on board, the Xantrax inverter from Hard Interface. The communication port could die on that device, or the monitor could, for whatever reason, die. The inverter is still intact, but it does not communicate via the remote control. If the inverter works on the inverter, but you can't enable or disable it on the remote, the problem is not the inverter per se, it's the communication port on the inverter charger, or on the inverter, and or the remote. The other thing too is you might want to look at, see that if there's an AC output on this, you might be blaming the inverter, but it's not the inverter the problem. You have an AC output, but you have not enabled the circuit breakers that are powering whatever appliance you want to power, like the microwave, the outlets. You're blaming the inverter, but actually the outlets are not on. Because an inverter does not power directly anything, it goes through circuit breakers. Okay, So the circuit breakers have to be on. No, you can't blame your microwave not working to the inverter if the microwave breaker is not turned on. Could, it be, could you only have one panel? So oh yeah, absolutely. This is just a conceptual, absolutely. On big boats, there's just one panel, but the back, they're effectively two. On most boats, if you have an inverter on your boat and it's probably done, conceptually on the front, you think you have one. But in reality, the panel is broken in parts in the back. There are ways that the way that it's wired. So this is just a conceptual saying that these are inverter loads or AC bypass loads 
and these are not inverter loads. It's just separating them, but they're, they're effectively separated, but they're one beside one another. And the panel looks one, but it's actually been divided into two parts. That's how you divide non-inverter loads and inverter loads on a boat. So if I switch that one off, I still could run my inverter? It would run. Yeah, you, there are ways. By the way, we're going to go down a rabbit hole. Just warning everyone here. Just going to go down for about 30 seconds and we're going to come back, okay? Don't want to lose anybody. Nobody exits. Inverters have this feature called pass-through. This panel here should have a breaker here called inverter. It's not an inverter breaker anymore. It's an inverter charger breaker. That has to be on all the time, forever and ever and ever. Never turn it off. It should have a cap. It shouldn't even be a circuit breaker. It should be a thermal circuit breaker. But they don't exist, and that's how they are. Never turn it off. This, if there's AC coming in here, there's AC going there, it goes in. If AC is here, it goes there. This device is, sees AC coming in, says, I have AC going in, even though you told me to be an inverter, you mean only be an inverter if I don't see AC. Then it sends AC out here, and then this is AC panel, inverter loads, not, or bypass loads. That's how it works. We're back out of the rabbit hole. Okay? Remember rule number one? Nothing's easy. Rule number one, nothing is easy. We're just tr trying to keep it simple. Your inverter, you don't have AC at all on board right now. There's generators not on, shore power's not on. That's why the dash is. Why would your inverter not work? It's pretty straightforward. You have a fuse that's blown. This is off. This still works, but the remote panel doesn't. They do fail. <coughs> or you have AC coming out of here, and this here, the breakers that you think should work, actually don't work because they're not on or they failed, potentially. Most of the time, 90% of the time, your inverter is going to fail here or the inverter is going to die and you're going to be disappointed that a 20-year-old piece of equipment, of electronic equipment died on your boat. And I remind people all the time, I'm like, oh, really? You're disappointed that your 25-year-old inverter died? I mean, like, so in your personal life at home, at the office, you have pieces of electronic equipment, electronic, full, full on boards, like a full computer, that's giving you great service after 25 years. I'm like, would, should I take a pen and paper and start writing down all these items because you're going to go so quickly? Or I, is my, to my hands too much to start counting? How many things in your life are 25 years old, electronic, full-blown, that are working? 25. In a, and then you say, oh, in a marine environment full of vibration, in an engine room where it gets hot. Oh, 25 years, you're disappointed? Okay, well, maybe we need to align your expectations. Someone maybe didn't tell you what's involved in an inverter. They last, honestly, 15, 20, 25, but at one point, like, you can't, this is not going to work forever, right? Like, it will fail. And they do fail because most of them were installed in the wave of invader craze, which was sub-2000. Between 95 and 2000, if you had a boat, you got an inverter, and it's a heart interface, freedom, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. There is, in British Columbia, if there's 15,000 boats with inverters, 12,000 of them have that inverter on board. Everybody got an inverter in that era and everybody got the same one. And those inverters are now failing. They just are, they're just normal. And they fail only when you use them. Inverters don't fail at the dock. They don't fail when you don't use them. They don't fail just before you go. They fail under use when you're away. So you eliminate the obvious. If you eliminate the obvious and everything else, then it's the inverter. Some inverters can be fixed. Some inverters can't. If it's a budget inverter, it can be fixed. If it's an expensive inverter, generally can be fixed. Budget inverters are high frequency. Expensive inverters are low frequency. One that's heavy, one that's big is expensive. One that's small and tiny and it's cheap can be fixed. That's how it works. Any questions on troubleshooting an inverter on a boat? Is it possible that you could have a whole panel failure? No, really rare. Very rare. You could certainly have a circuit breaker on this device that fails. There's an AC circuit breaker on this device, and that's a really good point. This here has an output breaker. I've seen that, where that AC output breaker has blown. There's a little thermal circuit breaker on the panel, on the inverter. So that's possible. But AC panels don't fail. 
I mean, I've seen dead shorts where they melt in the back, but then you're starting, everything's not working on your boat. Or it's like, oh, I smell fire on my boat. Nothing's working. Should I have someone come on board? I'm like, can you please leave the boat right away? Stay far and not use your boat until someone comes? Like literally, I had an owner, he's like, my wife smells fire. Saw a little bit of smoke behind the panel. Do you think we should have someone come on board? And we were at Coal Harbor at Royal Van. And I'm like telling one of my technicians, I'm like, drop everything you're doing right now and you need to get yourself to Coal Harbor the other side. And sure enough, there was a dead short that happened in the back of the panel. And breakers that started melting onto one another. And it was pretty close. So we disconnected the shore power and then fixed it, but yeah. So circuit breaker over here could fail, but panel failure is extremely rare, extremely rare. It happens, but very rare. Any other questions on troubleshooting or diagnosing an inverter?